And go. Caught. In me. Here we go. So, before we start, um... I'm disappointed in this game. We're disappointed. We were gonna go back and redo it because it sucked, but we're gonna try to play it out just to see if it gets better. Hmm. And there are multiple endings, so, you know, we'll play it out and then maybe try it again a different way. So, you can come out now, brother. How did it go? Better than we ever hoped for. The rooster is dead, and the madam has tasted her first blood. Heh. <laughs> Amazing. Completely worth getting shot for. Whoa. He got shot? A meddlesome falcon tried to disrupt the execution. Falcon? Really? That tenuous wretch? Don't worry, he floundered and bumbled around hopelessly. The madam thinks that he's of some use, but really, he's as good as dead. This is marvelous. Every piece is falling into place. Our dream will be reality in no time at all. To reason, brother. To reason. Act 4-C, Fraternity. Oh. <laughs> Ellipses all around, huh? Yeah. I hope you don't harbor too much hate for the madam. I know that rooster was your friend, but the madam does what she does for the good of France. Oh boy, oh boy, this is awkward. It is a bit. Perhaps a round of drinks are in order. After all, this is a tavern. What do you two say? Mm. I'm not thirsty. Yeah. I mean no disrespect, Fontaine, but I am not thirsty. Me neither. I get it. You're both a little shaken by what you saw. Can we at least get you some wine? Just a small glass to calm your nerves? No, I don't want to be drugged, thanks. Fine, whatever. Very good. Piero, fetch our guests some drinks. It's your round. My round? No way. It's your turn. Turns don't matter. <laughs> you still owe me for that omelet I generously paid for last Friday. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, you owe me for that coffee on Tuesday. Okay, so that's 30 cents of coffee deducted from a 60 cent omelet, plus the 25 cent peanuts you swiped from my pantry. <laughs> Hold up. I ain't so good at mental arithmetic. Listen, Sparrowson, you need to go. Go? Yes, I'll create a distraction. You head straight for the back door. Is that such a good idea? If we both stick around, we could both end up dead as soon as we rub that lioness the wrong way. If we both run, these two will probably shoot us in the back. So the way I see it, one of us running is the most viable of options. Falcon. Don't argue. Once you're out, find Valerity and tell him what you've seen. Okay. So it's agreed. You get this round and I'll owe you two cents. <laughs> yep. And I'll hold you to him two cents. Be right back. Don't you two move or nothing. He'll hold me to two cents. That's Piero such a miser. <laughs> Anyway, I don't feel like sitting in silence. Let's talk to past time. Gun question? Sure. I have a gun question. He looks like an enthusiast. Fontaine, I have a gun question. A gun question? Do go on. Um... Iron or lead bullets? Mmm. What's better, iron or lead bullets? What a delightful technical question. One could discuss the subtle differences for hours. Let's. Actually, let's do that. Perfect. Good call. So lead bullets, they're cheap. 
They're easy to make. With just a cooking pot, you can melt some lead down and cast it into the right shape. But they're also soft, so they deform when they hit something. That makes them useless against armor. That's where iron bullets come in. An iron bullet will zip straight through you, armor bone and all. Then again, who wears armor nowadays? I think lead bullets will stick around for a while. All right, I brought drinks. One for me, one for you, one for you, and one for... Hey, where's the little one? The little one? He's right. Oh, Merdy, I lost him. <laughs> you lost him? How did you lose him? I was gone for two minutes. I think I dropped the ball on this one. <laughs> Bed dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say the madam is going to string us up for sure. Actually, we could make up a cover story. We can't let her find out about this. Uh-oh. You can't let me find out about what? Um, I mean, should I take the fall or let them have it? I'd say we could do it because, you know, we're already kind of like on their shit list. So I let Sparrows in escape because those two. Yeah, I felt it wasn't right to keep Sparrows in here against his will. So I created a distraction to let him escape. It's somewhat gutsy of you to outright admit that. By rights, I should shoot you here and now. <laughs> but I won't. I need a lawyer to bring our plans into fruition. That little bird was dispensable. You are not. Word. Madame, if Sparrowson runs to the police, then both his location and the sleeping city are compromised. We should keep this meeting brief. Agreed. Falcon, let me quickly fill you in. As you probably know, we are planning to form a protest. An enormous protest on the 14th of this month. We intend to draw a massive crowd at the pa Place de la Concorde, and then we shall march across the Tuileries Garden. Did we want to write this down? Eh. 14th? We don't have a book wow. or a pencil. Pause. Moving on. A march across to Larry's. You intend to storm the Louvre? No. The Palais Royal. That's where the king and prime minister will be residing. I would like it to go peacefully. But... Peaceful uprisings have a habit of turning violent, don't they? Exactly. And we can't let the leaders of this country escape amidst the chaos. They must be tried for their crimes against the French people. On that note, I want you to lead the prosecution. You want me to prosecute the King of France? The King and the Prime Minister. They are both responsible for the rampant inequality that plagues this country. I mean, yeah. If you have a king, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the day of the revolution, we will drag both of those overpaid burgess into the streets and you shall prosecute them then and there. I think I understand. Prosecuting the pair for crimes against humanity, I suppose. It could certainly be done. If I were to interview a lot of citizens, gather a lot of evidence, file some paperwork, I could probably prepare a case in around two months. We don't have the luxury of time. Use your ingenuity on the day, just like you did in the catacombs. You cannot be serious. There is no alternative. The wheels of the revolution are already turning, and the revolution will ignite in under a week. The question on my mind is, what do we do with you until then? You're gonna leave him with us, ma'am. We'll keep a good eye on him. After seeing the atrocious job you two did guarding that little bird, I think not. It'll just... I'll just have to guard you myself, Falcon. You shall spend this week at my side while I complete our preparations. Oh yeah, Sparrowson's so small that he just like kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. At your side all day and night? Absolutely. I am not going to let you out of my sight for one minute. 
That seems excessive. You can trust me, madame. No, I cannot. You've promised to help me, but I know that you don't actually believe in the cause of the Second Republic. If I give you one grain of freedom, you will undoubtedly flee. True. This meeting is over. Come along, Falcon. I think she's a knight. I think that's what those brooches are. No idea. Le, Le Monio. 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 And then, while we were sitting in the tavern, Falcon gave me the opportunity to escape. He created a distraction and I sneaked away and went straight to the police. Then you called a meeting and, well, here I am. So, yeah. That's the whole story. I see. So Severin Cocorico died at the hands of the rebels. That's right. And Falcon revealed his true colors as a traitor. Uh, traitor? No, no, that's not right, Inspector. Falcon's not a rebel. He's just playing along so he can save his own life. Don't be so naive, Sparrowson. Put the puzzle pieces together. Falcon willingly leapt into the lion's den for the specific purpose of siding with the rebels. He let you escape because he could see you weren't truly sympathetic to the rebel cause. That doesn't make any sense at all. Falcon never shown a rebellious streak. Tell me, Sparrowson, what do you know about Falcon's past? Not a lot. He's a private person. Has he ever told you what he did during the July Revolution? Before he changed his name. Before he... No. He hasn't told me anything, really. Sparrowson, let me tell you about the man they call the Viridian Killer. Okay. Or not. Mm. No longer a royal estate, the Palais Royal has become a functional Burgess meeting spot. Okay, so we have four days. Mm, yes, and three places to go. The Hall Market is popular among all shoppers, no matter the class or wealth. Tulare Garden is a beautiful spot to relax, have a picnic, or plan a violent uprising. That's fun. <laughs> so, did you want to go to where? I'll let you pick. I don't know who we are right now. Are we Falcon, I guess? I don't know. Jeez. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we're Valerity walking Sparrows and through this fucking story. Right. <laughs> well, let's start here, I guess. Okay, we are Falcon. Le Hall, huh? Let me guess. You have two. Bleh, two. You have a weapon supplier somewhere around here. Or maybe this is where you plan on meeting an informant, a government defector. It is as good a meeting spot as any. Actually, I'm here for groceries. <laughs> there is no need for that look. You think that just because I am a gun-toting rebel, I don't need to buy any food. Here. Mambo Mart! Mambo Mart! Well, well. If it isn't Sotan and your little Gambare, you're growing bigger every time I see you. Oh, that was me. Ma'am, you have to hear this. Something big went down here yesterday. A policeman. A nasty, ugly policeman. Let me guess. He was bullying people into revealing secrets on the whereabouts of the revolutionaries. Well, that's how it started, ma'am. Same old bullying tactics. He was pushing around this old beggar rat who hangs around the market sometimes. But then when the rat wasn't speaking up, the policeman drew his gun and shot him. The policeman shot the beggar, just like that? Yep. But then the coward cop went and ran before we could turn on him. I find this difficult to believe. A policeman wouldn't openly shoot a beggar without just cause. Open your eyes, Falcon. This is the regime us Parisians live under. We are ignored by our government, oppressed by the police, and hanged by the court. 
Why do you think I am fighting so hard to make change? We cannot put up with this sort of bullying. It's weird. This can't be right. Something has to be missing from Sultan's story. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions, madame? Cross-examination. Sure, ask away. Make it quick, Falcon. <laughs> um... Who was the rat? Hope it wasn't Mousy. Just who was this beggar rat? I don't really know him well, monsieur. No one of us did. He was kind of a loner who hanged around asking for scraps of food and cents. I don't even know his name. That's so sad. Did he have no family, no means of support? Falcon, do you have any idea how many beggars there are on these streets of Paris? How many people go hungry? How many people are first forced to turn to crime? I am well aware, madame. I'm asking these questions to see if there was perhaps some reason why the particular rat was killed. But no, it appears this was the loss of one unnamed beggar rat among many. It is tragic. That it is, monsieur. Is there any other way I can help? Um, what did the policeman look like? What did the policeman look like? Well, I didn't get a good look, but... He was tall and ugly and mean looking and, and he had one eye. Uh oh. One eye? Yep, had one of them pirate patches. There's no way. Ring any bells, Falcon. I know a man who fits this description, but it simply could not be him. He's a bitter individual, but he's morally righteous. I can't imagine him shooting an innocent person so recklessly. Do not let your bias towards the justice system affect your judgment, Falcon. If you think you know who did this, then please, name and shame him. I think I should bite my tongue until I'm a little more certain. Did you want to know anything else, monster? Did no one investigate the shooting? If a policeman did shoot an innocent person, then there surely would be an investigation. Your naivety knows no bounds, Falcon. You think the police care if one of their own is out of control. Actually, there was one bloke asking around, but I don't think he was a policeman. Oh, go on, madame. Uh, well, he was this charming fox. It was mousy. No. Renard. A friend of yours, Falcon. Something like that. We should probably pay him a visit to see what he's up to. Pay him a visit. I suppose we can set aside a little time. Did you want something else? That's all, madame. Thanks for all your help. No problem. Anything to help, Mambo Mort? We'll try to get to the bottom of this, Sotan. Just make sure to stay safe when the revolution starts. Stay inside. Keep Gambad safe. Of course, ma'am. You stay safe yourself, you hear? This is some shiz. Mousy wasn't homeless. If Valerity shot Mousy, I'm a slapping. If Mousy was looking homeless to the people oh, around... Oh, there's Mousy. I was gonna say... Visitors! <laughs> Monsieur Volpe's visitors! I was gonna say, if he was looking homeless, he was undercover. Yeah. Really, Falcon, what do you hope to accomplish in this sleazy back alley establishment? Also, speaking of Valerity, you really let us down, guys. Yeah. You were supposed to let us know that we were supposed to talk to Renard. Yeah. And we forgot. Randy. <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to go back in three days and we totally forgot. We totally forgot. And I think we screwed it up. And then we got captured by the rebels. Yeah. He was supposed to tell us who the croak monsieur was because he was going to find him. And bring him. Anyways. Just anyway, kidding, Randy. You're good. <laughs> Sleazy. I don't think so. Anyways. Sleazy. Madame, my back alley office is perhaps a little cluttered and eclectic, but I resent the accusation of sleaze. Uh, maybe I should do the introductions. Monsieur Volpez, this is Madame Boumart. 
a um, friend of mine. Madame, this is... Renard Volpes, private investigator at your service. It is a pleasure to meet you, madame. Ah, a stoic. I'm sure you have some pressing questions to ask, Falcon, but before we get started, there's something I must tell you. Monsieur Sparrowson dropped by earlier. He informed me of your situation. Sparrowson, is he all right? Oh, yes. He is now working with Inspector Valerity attempting to unravel the rebel plot. Uh... <laughs> Just as I thought. It appears your lackey has solidified his position as a traitor to the Second Republic, Falcon. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Sparrowson doesn't strike me as a person who sides with any ideology. But you know, he asked me the most peculiar question. Would you like to know what it was? Of course. Such information is quite valuable. It would cost, say, 30 francs. How much do we have? Not. Uh... Whoops. I would love to buy it off of you, Monsieur, but I don't think I have enough. Really? That's a pity. But I feel pretty generous today. Maybe I ought to lend you this information for free. Sparrows and asked if you were the Viridian Killer. The one responsible for the random bombings during the July Revolution 18 years ago. Why on earth would he ask that? Perhaps the inspector had been telling him stories. What did you tell him? The truth, of course. That is, that I have no idea who the Viridian Killer is, but that I knew that it couldn't possibly be Falcon. Oh, and how do you know I'm not? <laughs> Falcon, please. You're a semi-drunk bumbling elf, not a ruthless killer. <laughs> anyway, I've started my own investigation into the Viridian Killer. It's fascinating stuff. Apparently he was seen in multiple places at once, which leads some to believe that he was actually more than one person. Huh. And do you know why they call him, or should I say them? The Viridian Killer? Viridian is a greenish color, isn't it? No, I don't have a clue. Crimson Killer would have been a much cooler name. <laughs> it appears that no one knows the origins of the name, which leads me to suspect that he, or indeed they, chose their own name. This is all very fascinating. Truly fascinating. But perhaps we can return to the conversation to why we're here. Maybe he was called that because green ink. Maybe. I don't know. Of course. Monsieur Volpes, we heard that you were investigating the murder at La Hall. That was. That victim was a friend of Mousie's. Aww. Aww. More of an acquaintance, really. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want you to know if you managed to uncover anything. We wanted to know if you managed to uncover anything. Did you find any leads? Any juicy clues? Juicy. <laughs> Not as such. It's quite a peculiar case. Did you hear that the murderer wore an eye patch? Oh, hell. I did. You know what that implies, don't you, Falcon? You only know of one police officer, or indeed one person, who wears an eye patch. Yeah, I mean, anyone could wear an eye patch, though. Just to make sure. You don't see any other eye patches around here. Okay. Her? No, I'm just kidding. Aha! <laughs> Well, yeah, this guy. The inspector. But that cannot be right. You wouldn't describe him as a murderous man, would you, Monsieur Volpez? Murderous? I don't know. He's certainly passionate about finding the Viridian killer. Who's to say he wouldn't kill in the pursuit of his arch enemy? Falcon, I want to solve this mystery as much as you do. But time is pressing, and we have other matters to attend. We must take our leave. Understood. Until next time, Monsieur Volpez. Goodbye and good luck, Monsieur Falcon. It was a pleasure meeting you, madam. Uh, Monsieur Volpez? That lioness looked pretty angry. Is... Is this revolution gonna be ending in blood, Monsieur Volpez, just like in 1830? Ellipses. <laughs> Interesting, interesting. Uh, one more place, probably. Yeah. Pick, save the palace for last, probably. Yeah. Let me think. So it takes ten minutes to walk from the Place de la Concorde to this very spot. 
and the Palais Royal lies five minutes north of here. But the crowd will be fairly large and slow. It may take twice, maybe three times as long to make that move. Having a logistics problem, madame? Perhaps. The plan is to walk toward, walk the crowd from here through Tuileries to the Palais de, Palais de Royal. Blech. Palais de Royal. <laughs> Jesus. Hard. But if we take too long to pass through Tuileries, the police will trap us in. We could be flanked and slaughtered. That is quite the issue. Hmm. Should we actually help? <laughs> Or um, reroute. Just meet at the palace? <laughs> Why not just meet at the palace? <laughs> Why not just get the protesters to meet at the pa Palais Royal itself? Because the Place de la Concorde is an ideal meeting location. It's enormous and easy to get to. I see, but even if you've got, say, half the protesters to meet at the Ro Palais Royal, you would cut down on traveling time. I get it. A smaller crowd would be easier to direct across the garden. I'll pass this idea along to Piero and see what he has to say. He's the one in charge of leading the crowd, after all. He's a ringmaster. That bird brain parrot would probably just shoot the idea down, right? Probably, but I appreciate your input. I don't know if you genuinely want to help or if you're just telling me what I want to hear out of fear. But thank you, Falcon. It's no problem, madame, for the Second Republic, right? Right. For the Second Republic. For the French Revolution. New day. New day. New day. Palais. To the palace. To the palais. The Palais Royal. Just look at that disgusting den of fat cat Burgess and hypocritical politician. Yeah. The king is probably in there as we speak. Probably sitting in his high chair, stuffing his bloated face with cake and wine while he boasts about being the perfect citizen king. Citizen king? <laughs> Did you come here just to moan about the king? No, I've come to assess the potential battleground. On the day of the rebellion, I might order Piero to set up a barricade over there. What do you think? There, right outside the Palais Royal? Of course, it's the perfect place for a defensive garrison. We can gather furniture from nearby buildings, build a wall, and position rifles to fend off police. When the time is right, it will serve as the ideal location to launch our assault on the palace. So you weren't just throwing empty words in the tavern, you actually do intend on dragging the king out of the palace through violence. Of course, he will never abdicate on his own volition. It's not as if I want to see bloodshed, Falcon. It is necessary, inevitable. I mean, we have to be realistic. There is no way to bring change to a country without violence, is there? Uh, definitely is. I think there have been many historical uh, figures and uh, movements that have said otherwise. Right. And there have been instances in which you know, they settled things without violence, like the Cold War, for instance. Yeah, well, yeah. But, uh... Um, also, I know that, uh, that's kind of what the civil rights movement was all about. Right. It wasn't necessarily completely without violence, but it was really only one side being violent. Yeah. And we all know what happened at the Capitol. And it was not... Uh, black people? Right. Who were being violent? <laughs> well, it usually isn't. I think there are ways. I think there are ways. People look back on violent moments of history. The executions, the wars, the bloody revolutions. But who's to say that a country could not be overturned just through the chance of the people? A pacifist revolution. Interesting. I would love for such a thing to have been possible. Ooh. Maybe, 
it would be better to avoid building the barricade. At least until it is clear that violence is inevitable. Right. That's good. That's a good compromise, madame. At least try. <laughs> we might turn this around. It's Valentine's Day. Whoa. Whoa. This newly built bridge boasts a magnificent view of the Louvre and offers a quick passage across the Seine. Pond de Art. And we'll do that next time. <gasps> That's 30. Whoa. Womp. Aw. So, I like the direction this is going. Seems we could turn it around, maybe. But you didn't want to finish this out? No. Okay. Sadness. But, doesn't mean we won't finish it. That middle portion looks like a big old boat. Whoa. Maybe it is. Whoa. Whoa. Bye. Bye.